Greetings everyone, this is part 2 of my Resident Evil 2 board game playthrough. I have Scenario 2, and this time I am playing as Ada, for reasons I'll go into shortly. Now, we, as usual, start with the knife and the handgun, and this time the scenario calls for two first aid sprays, which can restore three health. And it says, or resuscitate an unconscious character, but that's for multiplayer, so we're not dealing with that. Now, the problem with Ada, just like Kendo, whom I played as last time, is that... She has an inventory capacity of 6, which means that we already have 4 out of 6 taken up. I'll have to be careful what I pick up. Now here we have handgun ammo. I start with 15, like usual. Now Ada's ability, if you'll recall. Reckless. At the end of any character's activation, including her own, she may take an out-of-sequence activation. So she can sort of go a second time, which is pretty great. Now, once per scenario, she may discard a card drawn from the Tension deck without resolving the effect. That can be pretty nice, too. We'll see if that becomes relevant later. Now, why did I choose Ada? Well, here's the thing. I have this board, but also this board, completely separate from each other. And I have item piles A and B. It turns out I really didn't need to put the cards on the map last time. I actually have little item tokens. This is an item B. It's really hard to see, but there is a B on there. There it is. And then the white ones are item A, which... Let me see if I have a right side up one. I don't, so I'll just turn this one around. And... There, you can just see it a little bit there. I'll put that back down where it belongs. Now, we have two distinct areas because my goal is to start from here, and uh, actually that's Robert Kendo's token. I don't need that, do I? I'll get the Ada token instead. I was so intent on thinking I would play as Kendo, but I'm going to be doing uh, Ada this time. Now, Ada starts here. If I were playing two-player, then somebody would actually start on the second floor. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to go into the star's office. From here, this is a wall, but around here, through a door, around, up, through a door, up, around, through a door, stairs. Then we have the other area. Stairs, left, down through a door, and into the star's office, this big square where I win. What makes this hard? This is locked. I'm going to need the star's key to get in there. I actually blocked the name of this thing, but I need the star's key. I'll put this back up here for, for simplicity. And you may have noticed on the bottom floor, I have spade key. Spade key. This can make things difficult. Now, I have my item piles A and B, like I said. What are in those piles? Let's take a look at our scenario guide here. We have... The knife, handgun, first aid spray. We have three sets of handgun bullets, two green herbs, one spade key. We have one bow gun, one red herb, and one star's key. So the bow gun is why I'm playing as Ada. No one else in the game can, well, maybe Claire can use it. But, no, yeah, that's right. Claire can use it, but her ability is useless to me. So Ada it is. So Ada can use the bow gun, Kendo cannot. Now, the good news with Ada is that unlike Kendo, she has two dice to roll if she is to evade. Speaking of dice to roll, I don't have any red dice for this scenario because it's just the handgun and the bow gun. We have up to three blue dice and this little monster here. This will become relevant shortly. Now you can't tell by color by any of the tiles here, but the tiles are color coded on my instruction manual here, or my scenario guide. Green ones mean what you see is what you get. Yellow and amber ones mean that you have to roll the encounter die, which is that black die, and then whether enemies spawn and which type will will be found out by a dice roll. You may see here we got zombie dog potential here, so that's why I have the zombie card and the zombie dog card. The zombie we've seen before, it moves one space or up to one space, and suicide lunges, so if it attacks you and it connects, you take one damage and it just dies, because you step on its head or something. The dog can move up to two spaces, and if it attacks you, it does not immediately die on its own, so you just take damage, and that's bad for you. So, 
The only other thing I have to say is I have the Tension deck, and there are tons of cards in here. 30 of them are all clear. Six of them are bad news. We'll see if we encounter those. So, let's start the game. I can... Oops, I slipped a door off when I was moving around. That'll go back there. So my first movement will be to open the door. Remember, I have up to four move actions. So I open the door. One, two, three. Three movements, that's four actions. Now, this is a yellow tile I'm standing on. So, I will roll the encounter die. And I got the worst possible result immediately. This is some bad news here. So, yellow bad news means roll on the amber encounter table instead. Great. So now I'm going to roll the die again for a higher level threat. Two. So that means that I'm dealing with two zombies at the closest biohazard location. That sucks. Well, the good news for me is that I have two biohazard locations and they're equidistant. So I'm going to put both zombies over here because I do not need this in my life right now. Also, I forgot to mention, a zombie's already preset, 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 preset. So if I don't have any more zombies to draw, I think I, like, I think I just don't because what am I going to do? But... I do have more zombies to work with, so two. I will put them in here, and in here, and I believe that's going to be my turn here. I think that's all I do. Action phase, reaction phase, I think that's really it. I'm just going to double check the rules here to see if anything happens on the potential encounter table here. Action phase, move, open, search, all that good stuff. There's the attack. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is still part of my action phase because I was exploring, so I think I'm going to be in trouble now. Plus, my activation phase is over anyway, so zombies have spawned, so I guess they're going to move toward me, which sucks. So, one of them moves toward me, and actually, does it even need to move toward me to attack? Its attack range is... Zero. So, okay, it moves toward me and attacks. So I need to roll two dice to see if I can evade it. Two dice. I do successfully evade it. That would have been bad news, but I have two dice. This one's good, and this was actually a level two evade. Just felt like pointing that one out. So that's pretty nice. Now, let me just see something. I don't think I do an out-of-sequence thing for this. Making an attack. Well, I'm not doing that. Attacking him in the same square. No, it'll be reaction phase I want to look at. So I've completed my action phase. Okay, enemy reactions are resolved one at a time. I very much appreciate that. So if an enemy attacks me, it moves toward me. I have to roll. If I dodge, then I may push the enemy, moving it to an adjacent square. That is freaking brilliant. So I'm just going to push this guy somewhere away that's easier for me to keep track of. Zombie number two moves up to me and attacks. I have to roll again. So, two blue dice. The third one's out of the way here. And I'm good. So, I push the zombie away. That's the reaction phase. It's over because normally zombies, like enemies one tile away can hear you, but the door's shut. So this is not my problem. Now I draw a tension card. All clear. So I'll put that here. And you know what I'll do? I'll put the item cards up above. Tension cards up. All clear. There we go. Turn one. Already not looking very good, to be perfectly honest. So my turn. One, two, open the door. Four. Now I'm on a brand new tile yellow. Guess what? We get to roll the encounter die again. Encounter die. Four. Which translates to snatching talons. The active character must pass an evade roll or my action turn ends right now. 
Well, the good news is that was going to be the end of my turn anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I'll roll an evade just to see what happens for the hell of it, but my action turn's already over. Okay, but now my a action turn ends anyway, doesn't matter. Reaction, these guys are only one tile away, so they can hear me. Oops. I'll move them both one. There we go. I'll move them purposefully into the wall because they can't diagonally warp through the wall. Strategy. But this guy also heard me, so he's coming closer. That's it. So, tension. All clear. Next turn. Close the door. Um, two, three, and this is... Yeah, th this is honestly going to suck, but I'm going to hazard the uh, the knife. I really don't want to use a bullet on this guy, considering that with a gun I can potentially fire up to three bullets in succession, but that costs three bullets. So I'm going to roll one knife, and if I roll one little blast, I push the zombie back, and if I roll two blasts, I kill it. The problem is I only have a one in six chance of actually killing it. So, we'll see what happens. Well, I push it anyway. Okay. I push it down the hallway. Take that. And that's my turn. So, zombie can't move through walls, so he comes closer. And these guys can't hear me. So, that's it. Tension card. No escape. Oh. Behind you hear the... I guess behind, comma, behind, you hear the creak of a door opening and closing again, accompanied by the sound of sh shambling footsteps. Locate the tile closest to me where there are enemies but no characters. Okay, that's right next to me. Place all enemies from this tile on an adjacent tile closer to the active character in the square that contains the door of stairwell. Con okay, so... The tile adjacent closer to me in the square that contains the door or stairwell connecting two tiles just closer to me, so I guess it just approaches me. Alright, that's a mild inconvenience. Good thing this is the only enemy on the tile, or that could have really been awful. So, alright, fine, he's on top of me. So now, he attacks... Actually, come to think of it, for, um... For an out-of-phase action here... Sorry, I'm moving the camera around so much. Or for an out-of-sequence reaction, making attacks, it says it generates noise and attention, so after the action is resolved... Perform a move reaction for zombies that were not hit by it. Oh, I did hit it, though. We're good. Alright, so the zombie moves closer. It attacks me, I guess. It's his turn anyway. Oh, wait, no, no, no. But the turn was over. So it's just on me. No, we're good. So next turn, I'm going to move past the zombie, but I'm going to have to roll an evade to do it. So, roll an evade, and if I mess this up, it attacks me. I messed it up. It attacks me. Now I have to roll an evade for it. And it actually hit me. Well, that means that I lose one health, and the zombie is dead. That sucked. Uh, and I think that actually cost me one of my turns. So that's, let's just call that one. Two, three, four. This door's locked, so I can't do anything about that. The items are, you know, all in, in this business. So that's my turn. Nobody can hear me, and there's nobody around for miles anyway. So... Draw a card. All clear. Good for me. So, I will do... One. Open the door. Three. Four. Actually... Yeah, no one's anywhere nearby, so I'll, I'll leave the door open. It's fine. That's my turn. No one's nearby, so there's no reaction phase. All clear. Good for me. Next... One, two, three, four. No one's nearby. No escape again, which is irrelevant to me. So that was actually, it was really fortunate that I drew that. That's effectively an all-clear. So now I have options. I could go into this door and try getting this item, because this door's locked with a spade key. Or I can go into this door and go for these items. That seems like the more appropriate option, so, open, two, three, pick it up. This is an A item, you'll recall. 
I can get that on the camera here. Is tell me this isn't upside down. No, we're good. It's an A item. So I'll remove that from the board and I will draw an A card, which is appropriately enough a green herb. But that's my turn because oh, the green herb restores one health. Okay, that's perfect. But that's my turn anyway because that was all of my actions. So, and there's no one nearby because the doors are closed. So, oh god, blood curdling howl. S chilling howls cut through the air as undead hounds bound in pursuit, feral animals driven by rabid ferocity. Spawn two zombie dogs on my tile. That is ass on the uh, the biohazard space. That's bad news. All right, we're doing this now. Okay, well, fortunately, that was the tension phase, so that's it. But this is some bad news, man. This is, like I might even consider leaving this room. What are the A tiles, anyway? The A tiles are... Ah, the spade key is included in the A tiles. So I feel like I really should check out what these things are. This, this, this could kill me, actually. So one, two, three, four. I can't even pick it up. That's my turn. One, two. This is an actual disaster. But that's their turn. So, tension card. Clear. Alright, my turn. Pick up item. So let's clear the item tile off the board here. And item A is handgun bullets, which means my inventory is now full. If my inventory is full, the handgun bullets are good for 8 points, so I probably should just start using my handgun now. So, that's one of my turns. You know what I'm going to do, actually? Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? Oh no, you know what? I think if enemies are in my tile, I must expend all of my actions. Otherwise, I get in my turn early, so I think I'm actually obligated to use up everything. So, you know what? Let's start with this. Green herb to free up inventory space. You're out of here. And you are restored. That's two actions. Three, four. I can have my cake and eat it too. So, enemies coming in. And they can't jump through walls, so one, two. But getting past them is going to be a genuine challenge. And tension card. Good. Alright, so, I am going to... Use my handgun's ability, which has this rapid fire thing, I can spend up to two more bullets. So I could spend one, two, or three bullets to roll one, two, or three blue dice. Now the zombie dogs have one health, so if I can just get one double blast on these dice, I will take them out. So I'm going to fire three bullets, I'll deal with the bullet counter later. I have all three blue dice in the game, I hope that one of them connects. Blast, blast, oh no, that is two blasts. Good, and actually I rolled two double blasts, which is really fortunate. So before I forget, I will reduce my handgun ammo count. Wrong way. 14, 13, 12. I'll put that down there. And one of these dogs is dead. Now I have three actions left, so I am going to hazard... No, it's not worth it. I was going to try dodging past him, but he'll just attack me. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to spend three more bullets. Normally I don't, I don't want to do this, but I'm really trapped in a, a corner here. Miserable failure. So I just lost three bullets. So that leaves me with... You can't really see that. Nine unfortunate. That's my turn, and before the dog even does its own phase, because I attacked... Oh, actually, come to think of it, I did, the, I did the attack wrong. When I fired at the first dog, the second one is supposed to immediately rush in. So I kind of blew that one. Um, well, you know what I'll do then? I'll have the dog attack me. If it hits me, then I will undo my attack. But anyway, I have two dodge dice. Let's just pretend that I only killed the first dog, the second one immediately attacks because of the out-of-sequence thing. I do actually dodge it. 
you know what, then I'm going to undo my attack on the dog because I already went back in time. I'm good at board games, you see. So I should have 12 bullets. I screwed this up. I'm forgetting the out-of-sequence thing. 12 bullets. And now that the dog's on my tile... But then again... Oh yeah, well now it's time for the dog's real attack, though, because that was the out-of-sequence thing, right? I think that's how it works. Oh, no, 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 now it would still be my turn. That was my first attack, so I have potentially three moves left. So yeah, I will do this right. I'm going to try evading the dog. I'm going to try rolling past it. Which fails miserably. And it just gets a free attack on me, which I have to try dodging. I at least get that done. That's one movement that's a miserable failure. I will try again. Good enough. So now I can only move two squares. One, two. Now it's the dog's turn. It's right on top of me again. It attacks. Good, I dodge it. Because I only, I only need to do the most basic dodge in order to dodge the dog. Because it is threat level one right here. So now it's the tension card. All clear. Now, I'll try moving past the dog again. Because I can actually potentially escape. Good. Now let's go all the way here. One, two, three. I'm out the door. The dog still is coming, though. Dog can come after me. Tension. Undead ambush. Spawn two zombies on the same tile on my character, the closest biohazard symbol. That's not a big deal, actually. So, a dark silhouette is the only warning before glass shatters to jagged shards and death resumes its tireless pursuit. Okay. Now, it, like, it says the closest biohazard symbol. Does that mean the one that I'm standing on right now? Or am I allowed to get away with that? I actually need to see about that. Tension. What does it say about tension? Tension phase. They always spell disaster. If I can't resolve the text, well, I can do that. Wow, I'm not sure how to do that. That's a bit frustrating. Whatever, let's just let's just play nice and spawn the zombies on me, so that sucks. Ugh. This is this is a mess. Okay, tension phase is over, but the zombies are on me. That's a pain. So No, you know what? I can make this work. I can make this work. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is dodge past the zombies. I wanted to shut the door, but I have to roll to do that too. And I'm not doing that. So here's what I'll do. I'll dodge past the zombies, but because there's two on my tile, I need to roll a level two escape or two level one escapes. Good. I actually did it. So check this out. I'm going to avoid the whole scenario. One, open the door, cross over, close the door. There we go. Which means that this whole area of the map is now irrelevant. These guys can no longer chase me. This guy's going to be a problem. Actually, both of these guys are going to be a problem. But, these three things are over. So, uh, reaction phase. This is stairs. Is the zombie allowed to go cross over that? I don't know if that is allowed, but I mean, I am able to walk on the stairs. Eh. I don't know. Let's just, let's just put him on my character. Let's just do that. Boom. He attacks. So, I have two dodges. Two dodge attempts. I succeed. So, I push the zombie away. Zombie number two moves one space toward me. That's good. And there's nothing past him. I mean, this, the spade door, that's a problem. But there's an item I want to get. So, one, open, cross over, close. I am now safe from the zombies, temporarily. And by the way, if the spade key is not right here, then I'm going to have to go upstairs to look for the spade key, and I'm not excited about doing that. Just want to throw that one out there. So, no reaction phase, all tension phase. Clear. So now... One, pick up the item. This head better be the spade key or I'm going to cry. It is not the spade key. Oh, boy. 
three. Leave the door closed. There's nothing on my tile, so I'm allowed to wait. End phase. Clear. Let's just straighten out this pile here. Straightened out. Okay, so... Wow. Um, and my inventory is absolutely full. So you know what I'm going to do, actually? One. Two. I'm going to fire three bullets at one of the zombies. That'll be my third action. So let's do that. Fire three bullets. Because I, I may as well reload my gun, right? Um, miss, pushback, and pushback. Alright, fine. Um, pushback. There, got him. Now I'll fire three. Oh, oh let, me, let me reduce my bullet count. So it's 12, 11, 10, 9. Now let's just expend three more bullets on the zombie that's directly in front of me. Let's clear these item tiles out of the way. Push, kill. Thank you. So this guy's out. Good. I needed to free up inventory space. I can't do that yet, but I will. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, because when I attacked the first zombie, the second one immediately got close to me and attacked. Ah, damn it. All right, roll for dodge. There, I dodged. Okay, now I shoot that zombie and he's dead. Good, we're golden. But because I shot that second zombie, this guy immediately comes up too. And that was my phase. Now it's his phase. So he moves toward me and attacks because this game is stressful. So now I gotta dodge. No. Yes. Push him back. Okay, things are a little bit calmer now. Now I will... Reload, so I will give myself. Oh wait, no, yeah, that's right. I shot three more bullets, so I should have six six ammo now. But now I'll reload, so it's plus eight. So that's fourteen. That feels a lot better. Twelve, thirteen. Sorry about the lack of focus here. It's really difficult doing this with uh. With with one hand effectively, I'm doing everything one handed. That's thirteen now. Because it's really hard to see through the camera's lens. There, 14. Good. And this ammo is out of here. Now I have five things in my inventory. Hooray! So, that was one of my turns. Two. So now we're on the second floor. Three, four. Oh, man. I wonder... I don't know if zombies are allowed to climb stairs, actually. That's a question. But anyway, I'm not on the same tile as him, so... Who knows? Tension. Prehensile grasp. Pale and bloody fingers snatch at you from places unseen. An icy hand grasping your ankle and holding fast. Place a prehensile grasp token next to me. At the start of my next activation, I must pass a dodge evade roll, or it just ends my turn. Ugh. Alright. So, um, I prepared for this. Prehensile grasp. There. So this isn't a big deal, because I happen to be on a tile with no enemies, so this is actually the best time I could have gotten that. So... Oh, wait a minute. It says I must pass, uh... This? Does that mean... No, I think it's just any dodge, isn't it? Because the three levels of dodging are... There's this, this... And this. So I think it is just a level 1 dodge. Okay, level 1 dodge time. Success. Okay. Now my turn can actually start. So first of all, 1, pick up. Come on, spade key. Oh, thank goodness. Alright. Speed key. Now the bad news is that I have to go downstairs to get any spade key stuff. This stuff is guaranteed not to be star key. That's going to be, uh, one of those is a green herb and one of those is handgun bullets. I know that for a fact. And there are no B items on this floor at all. But the stars key is 
one of these three things. So I'm going to have to go get those. So, three, four, end phase, clear. One. Now this is going to be interesting. I'm going to have to get through this zombie here. So, two, roll to pass him. Good enough. That one was also good. Three, four, I'm on the... Yeah, I'm on the tile with the door. Zombie's turn. Tension. Golden. Now I can use the key. One, two, uh, three. It's closed again. Four. And now I can consider this door unlocked, actually. So let's just move this card off the board here so I can see things. There, that's a wall. Good. No one can hear me. They, I close the door. Echoes in the darkness. Place an... Is this different? Yeah, okay. Movement and sounds haunt your steps. Foreboding darkness hiding what horror might lurk within. Place an Echoes in the Darkness token on the tile occupied by the next character to activate. So that's me. If I am on the same tile as that at the beginning of my tension phase, I must draw two additional cards. It's not a big deal. So all I have to do is just not be on this very same tile and burn through the deck faster. Not a problem. I can deal with that. Echoes in the Darkness. So that's right here. Easy. My turn. One... Two, pick it up. Item B deck. Oh, hey, star sk Oh, wait, I know I can't search for items. Oh, no, that's okay, though. I can discard a card whenever I want. So let's just say I'll discard my first aid spray. It's fine. Because you never know if I needed to keep the spade key. Now I know I don't, but no cheating. So, there. Star's key. I can beat the scenario now, which means I'm not going to get the bow gun. And it's a damn good thing I'm not, either, because... Remember, to get the bow gun, I'd have to go back through here, back all the way around, through here, one of those is the bow gun, and what was the other thing? Oh, a red herb. So one of these is the bow gun, one of these is the red herb. Well, I guess we're not going to find out what the bow gun does this scenario. So I'll just cheat and show you. Because now I'm not going to go in that room for sure. The bow gun, you roll three dice naturally. It just rolls three dice even though you only fire one shot. Now there's no ammo for the gun here, so you have six shots and that's it. Roll three dice. One blast thing pushes back. Two blast things does one damage and pushes back. Now, in this particular scenario, everything has 1 HP, so it would just be a kill, but if I'm fighting tougher enemies, it'll push them back, too. And this icon... Now, you recall with the handgun, this icon meant I could pay additional dice to do up to three... three dice. Uh, I could spend up to three ammo to do up to three dice. This just means it has a blast effect, for some reason, even though it's a bow gun. So if there are two enemies on the same exact tile that I hit, they all get hit, which is amazing. But... I'm not using that card this scenario, so that's just the way it is. So, that was two movements. I moved here and I picked it up. Oh, wait a minute. It said if I'm on the same tile as this. Oh, so I am going to just stay here. Oh, well. Say love I I thought I'm at the same space. It's the same tile. Whatever. So I removed this. I removed that. Now it was... Draw two additional cards. Oh boy, so that's three cards. That's dangerous. One, immediately. Prehensile Grasp. Minor inconvenience. But that's the only other Prehensile Grasp in the deck. There's that. Two more cards. Echoes in the Darkness again. Wow! I mean, this one will be easy to avoid if I can escape Prehensile Grasp. If. And then one more. All clear. Okay, so first of all, I must roll an evade for Prehensile Grasp before I can do anything. So, 
Success. Thank God. Because if I failed, I would have had to draw three more attention cards. So I'll get rid of both tiles right now because I know I'm leaving this room. So, one, two, I'll fire three shots. Let's just do that. Three bullets. Three dice. Pushback. And I hit him with two of those pushback bullets. So, ooh, ooh, he goes all the way back. And I lose three bullets. This is a case, you know, it turns out because I'm not getting the bow gun, I might have, well, I was going to say I might have been better off playing with Kendo for rerolling attack rolls, but these two dodge roll dice are just the best. So I pushed him back, that was three moves, because I opened the door, moved in, attack was number three. That's what that was. Okay, so now I move up here. Normally an enemy would immediately move after me after I attack, but not the one I actually hit. Now it's his turn. He gets closer. Now it's tension card. Only one. Good. And I have 11 bullets left, so I'll attack with three of them. I'm allowed to spend extra because I know I can beat the scenario now. I actually killed, too. Beautiful. You're dead. And my handgun ammo count goes from 11 down to 8. It's hard to see. There it is. 8. Put that down. So he's dead. That was one move. 2, 3, 4. Which means I'm now on the second floor. That's good. And no one's around. Tension. All clear. Now, just for the record, by the way, this whole area I never need to touch. There are level or card uh, deck A items, which I don't care about. Only if I had actually started here with player two would this be a problem. But I'm just not going to deal with any of this. I don't have to. Even if I did, like, the only reason I would have to get up here is if the spade key were one of these. That would be a problem. But it's not. I got really lucky. So one, two, three, open. That's my turn. Good. One, two, open. Four. And if you are in this office, well, if all players are in this office and there are no enemies in the office, then the scenario is over. I win. I actually did it. I win. I beat the second scenario of the Resident Evil 2 board game. That's rad. Oh, by the way, here's a fun fact. Oh. Oh, no. I just realized I've been playing the entire scenario wrong because I forgot to roll the encounters for every tile I stepped on. Oh, I blew it. Oh, I turned this into easy mode. Well, in any case, you saw what the scenario could have played out like. It would have been very similar, but with more enemies. But that, ah, that's embarrassing. But still, you got a general idea of how this works. I always forget something. In scenario one, I forgot about dodging enemy attacks. In scenario two, I remembered enemy encounters until I didn't. I did it right for two tiles, and I blew it. Look at this. First floor. This tile was cool. This was, this was a yellow tile, this was a red tile, plus those damn dogs. This was actually okay. Then we have second floor. Immediate red tile. I blew that one. Uh, then we have amber tile, which I never had to... No, I landed on it. But there wouldn't have been enemies. That would have been fine. So there were three tiles that I should have had enemies on. Not as bad as I thought. Not as bad as I thought, but still bad. So that would be... What is that now? That's two... No, I guess it's four tiles, right? It's two ambers and two yellows. You know what? Just for the fun of it, let's see what I should have encountered. I'll roll both yellow first, then both amber. But that's embarrassing. I apologize for that. So yellow number one would have been one zombie. A mild nuisance. Yellow two would have been snatching talons. I must evade or my turn just ends. So no enemy. That's not so bad, and I probably would have dodged that. Amber tile. Uh, two zombies at the closest biohazard mark. That could have sucked. Actually, that would have sucked. That would have blocked my entrance on the stairs. And lastly, three, which is just two zombies. That would have sucked, too. Okay, this should have been harder, but I did a pretty good job. 
I did a pretty good job. You get the idea. Oh, and the, the only other thing I was going to say is the star's office in particular is if a player is in here when, you know, this is a multiplayer game, if somebody gets here and just waits for the other player, they do not have to draw a tension card. This is actually a safe haven, which is kind of cool. Okay, so I kind of botched the scenario. I spent a little more ammo than I would have because I knew there were fewer enemies because I forgot to roll for the other enemies. But this was pretty good. Anyway, there you go. Resident Evil 2 board game, scenario 2 out of 8. Not bad, so thank you very much for watching. Until next time, everyone.